Did uh, these uh, earlier scientists, for example, did they know about the law of falling objects before Galileo? Well, they, 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 this, they investigated what they called uh, uniformly difform motion. Um, uniformly deform, a, a very odd uh, a me, a, a series of concepts, uh, a way of getting uh, acceleration, uniformly deform motion. Uh, and so they, 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 it was part of their thinking that motion could be, could change, unif could be deform, meaning changing, mm -hmm. and change in some regular way. Uh, so yes, it, they in fact did investigate the law of fall, falling bodies. I think that Duhem also mentioned they may have, before Copernicus, uh, gone through a lot of his arguments and just come to the opposite conclusion for convenience sake. Uh, right. Well, in fact, Duhem points out that Niccolo Rem went through all of Copernicus's arguments a few centuries before Copernicus, uh, decided, in fact, that it was intellectually superior to think that the Earth is in motion, uh, that is, rotating about its center, instead of thinking that all of the stars were rotating uh, at uh, around the Earth, uh, but decided th that, uh, in fact, that, th that there was no reason to go one way or another, and, uh, and thus uh, went with the weight of tradition. So that the, the, there was no uh, necessity uh, to think that um, uh, prior to Copernicus, uh, the mo motion of the Earth was an impossibility. Uh, the motion of the Earth is, uh, at least the rotation of the Earth, was considered, discussed. Uh, the arguments were, uh, were thought equal on both sides and uh, um, not the thought there was no sufficient enough reason for going one way or the other and went with tradition, uh, which is basically what Orem does. And, uh, uh, and Buridan, his, what was his contribution about the uh, cons conservation of impetus or something? Um, well, um, among other, I mean, uh, yes, uh, impetus uh, is, is this, this intermediate notion, uh, a precur clearly a precursor to the law of inertia. Um, impetus, uh, I, I, it was clear to Buridan that the Aristotelian explanation of co the continued motion of an arrow w was just not adequate, um, that the arrow should not be moving after it had left the bow according to Aristotelian theory. And so uh, Buridan needed to put in a, 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 a mechanism whereby um, the arrow would be given what he called an impetus, uh, a, a, a continued push, a quality impressed into the arrow after it had left a hand, and that this impetus would then degrade uh, because of the of friction and and, and uh, so it, it the theory of impetus, of which Buridan is one of the great contributors, which can of course be traced from Buridan to later thinkers. We have we are get, have to get to the end of yes. uh, the the session today, but I want to thank you very much for coming here. And if you have some final words for the viewers, uh, I'd like to give you an opportunity to have the final word. Oh, well, thank you. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, uh, I, I just, w uh, I suppose, uh, as a final word, I would think that uh, uh, the study of Duhem as a, as a thinker at a particular time and place, worrying about his own s existential situation, his, his religion in the context uh, of, of France, and coming up thinking also about uh, uh, the history of science and the philosophy of science, is itself uh, uh, of, of great interest. The, the history of science uh, uh, was uh, immensely helped by his, by his contribution. Uh, and he, after all, was a physicist, not a historian of science. So well, thank you so much for your, your very thank good you very contribution. Much. And we can show you how to get in touch with Professor Aru at the end of the program. Thank you. Quantos tremores futuro 